Song called Starting Positions, uh, formerly referred to as Jackie, J Jackie Jones for Senate, uh, by Michael McNeil at the piano. Uh, the first of many by Michael that we'll hear this evening. Uh, the next piece that we have on the program is called City Juice by myself. Thank you. 
Thank you. So that was by this guy. Yeah. I don't think he introduced himself. Evan Corden, our violinist. Yeah. City Jew. <laughs> uh, and our oboist is Megan Kyle. And, uh, and our cellist is Katie Wiseman. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. It's always special for me to play at the Bob Shop because um, I, uh, when I was in high school back in the um, uh, before, in the previous century, actually, um, <laughs> I would come to concerts at the Bob Shop, and I also went to college over at Nazareth College locally, and kept coming to concerts. And so, and here I am on the other side. So, um, yeah, the the you know Rochester's got a really great music scene, and so much of the great stuff that's happening happens here. Yeah. So, thanks for supporting that um, now and hopefully in the future too. So, um, you may have heard we have an album out. Uh, the first tune we played is on that album, Starting Positions. Um, the one we just played is uh, going to be on the next one. Um, and now we're going to play another one on the album. This is from a series of pieces where um, the three of us play sort of composed stuff, um, and the other one improvises. Um, and so this is uh, Jack Rapids Palace uh, C, which features cello so Katie Weissman's going to improvise and we're going to the rest of us are going to do some other things <laughs> I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain.
This one, I, I'm obligated to mention, is a piece I wrote for my wife. <laughs> it's, called, uh, it's called Two Travelers from the, um, the famous Robert Frost poem, Not By That Name. Um, <laughs> the Road Less Traveled? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
that was two travelers for Megan McNeil. Mm -hmm. um, this next one is by me. Um, it's called Zenobia. Um, it's part of a series I've been working on um, of pieces based on Calvino's Invisible Cities, which is a really interesting book I highly recommend. Uh, it's a series of kind of surreal, absurd um, descriptions of cities that are kind of allegorical, metaphorical, very cool. Um, I'm just gonna read the chapter that, or a, a part of the chapter that inspired this. Um, it's, it's called Zenobia. Now I shall tell of the city of Zenobia, which is wonderful in this fashion. Though set on dry terrain, it stands on high pilings, and the houses are of bamboo and zinc, with many platforms and balconies placed on stilts at various heights, crossing one another, linked by ladders and hanging sidewalks, surmounted by cone-roofed cone belvederes, barrels storing water, weather vanes, jutting pulleys, and fish poles and cranes. No one remembers what need or command or desire drove Zenobia's founders to give their city this form, and so there is no telling whether it was satisfied by the city as we see it today, which has perhaps grown through successive superimpositions from the first, now undecipherable plan. But what is certain is that if you ask an inhabitant of Zenobia to describe his vision of a happy life, it is always a city like Zenobia that he imagines, with its pilings and its suspended stairways, a Zenobia perhaps quite different, a flutter with banners and ribbons, but always derived by combining elements of that first model. That said, it is pointless trying to decide whether Zenobia is to be classified among happy cities or among the unhappy. It makes no sense to divide cities into these two species, but rather into another two, those that through the years and the changes continue to give their form to desires, and those in which desires either erase the city or are erased by it.
so now it's the time for the audience participation aspect <laughs> of tonight. Okay, so um, if anybody did not grab manuscript paper and a pen from up front, now is the time to go snatch it. Um, so we started putting together our thoughts about getting the record released in the fall. We started having our Zoom meetings, and we quickly realized that we wanted to be able to play, but like there was no way to really make it work with Zoom or whatever else because of all the latency on the internet and whatever. So Michael was reading a print magazine. I don't know if anybody remembers those, still, get, still gets them, yeah, print magazine. And he saw an idea that um, led us to start doing what we call telepathic improvisation. So for us, the way that we do this, and you can see some videos of this um, on the internet, we pick a you know preordained time, we get ourselves set up to record, we meditate before the time, and then at the said time, we improvise for five minutes. And we're not connected at all except on the astral plane. And so we would you know, usually do this and then have a meeting and then put it together and it was actually quite terrifying because we were like really together and sounded good. And that you know, led us to have some type of you know, existential crisis as you know, are we really good at music or is this all a joke, who knows. But anyway, we wanted to do some telepathic activities with you. So um, we are going to, the basic idea is to divide everybody up into two groups and some people will be sending the ideas, musical or otherwise, and other people will be receiving these ideas and writing them down on the paper in any way you see fit. These were supposed to be like mimeograph staff paper stuff, but my mom got them on her buy nothing group and I only looked at them once we got here and they're kind of messed up. So it doesn't matter though, because it's all about just creating. So feel free to use normal notation or just draw, write, it doesn't matter. We're gonna take the scores, whatever happens, and we will perform them afterwards. So maybe if we could split the group like, Megan and Nathan, could you raise your hands please? Anyone behind Megan and Nathan is in group A. Anyone in front is in group B. What about, in what about Megan? Yeah, Megan, what about Megan and Nathan's gro group can be in the front group. <laughs> yeah, that kind of makes sense. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's, it, this is all just whatever. And we're gonna do it twice so everyone gets to both send and receive. Mm -hmm. So the, the back half is going to send first. And by send, I just mean you know telepathically send whatever you feel like into the room and the receivers will pick it up to be written down in some way, shape, or form on the paper. And so we'll, we'll do it twice. Um, and before we do the actual sending and receiving, we're gonna take a minute to get situated. So um, everyone can close your eyes and think about you know, where you are in the room, where other people are in the room. We would do this and try to visualize around, you know, in our own houses, you know, where, where is Megan? Oh, she's over at her house. Evan is over at his house. Michael is in Virginia. So try to think about all that and we'll, we'll get connected for a minute and then we'll have three minutes to write, which I will tell you when to do it, okay? Okay, start to wrap things up. If you have an idea that you really need to get down, take your time, don't worry. Um, like I said before, there are videos of this on the internet that we have posted. It's super creepy. I highly recommend watching them. Um, there's also an interview that we did with our good friend Adam where we talk about this and our other performance practice stuff at length. So if you're really interested in hearing more about how and why we do things, um, that's also on the internet. You can Google us. <laughs> papers, oh sorry, give me your papers please. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, we got the part. No, I want to be one of them. Cool. I would like to be part of the tap. 
I would like to be a first. Okay. I want to be Everybody a first. Everybody gets an F. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for all of you. Wow. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh. I want this one. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of passing them out at random. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ah, yeah. Exciting. You didn't say that there was a dirty word on there. I didn't read it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, everyone can learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do want that one. Okay. Okay. We should have had you sign them so we knew who was the suits. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave them out. If you feel so inclined to autograph it after we yeah. have played them, uh, you're more than welcome to. We're not trying to bogart these either, so. <laughs> Don't want, oh. want anyone to think that we're stealing your idea. This one has actual <laughs> pitches. This is this one. Yeah, how do you want to do this? <laughs> we have maybe like ten minutes, or it's already nine o'clock. Yeah. Five ish. Five ish. Yeah, five. Best tempo through all these. Best tempo. We each, and we each have four sheets ish. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move my sheets in it. I'm gonna go through my sheets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going
For you, this one uh, is actually uh, based off of a poem written by a friend of mine. The poem is called Ponds. My friend's name is Marina Lichtstein. Uh, she's a Moldovian uh, transplant, or she's American now. Um, and this poem appears in her book called Two Travelers, published by Argos Books. Wait, that's not right. I'm not, two <laughs> Hunters. <laughs> two Hunters is the name of the book. Two Travelers is the name of the composition Michael McNeil wrote for his wife. <laughs> Two Hunters is the name of the book. Uh, you can find it at your, at your local bookstore, and if they don't have it, you can kindly ask to have it ordered. Even the palms waste away here. Even they strip a shred. Even they bark. Even the palms wither. Even the weather wears. Sun stalks them. Even the car wheels trip. I mean, even the tires tire. And the palms all break. Even the palms break. Even the palms leave leaves. leaving even the palms leaving even the song of alms
the sun here sings. The Psalm of Alms. Past Psalm. Open Psalm. Even the psalm in the hand is worth two in the hand. Even the palm here dries. Even the desert deserts. The seasons, the palms in a plum on a plum lawn. Even the Paul here gathers. trees pawn I mean even the palm trees pawn Thanks everybody so much for being here. We're going to play one more um, from the album. And speaking of the album, there are some copies for sale up there. Um, there are also some prints of the beautiful artwork by Meredith Gilna, who's up here. as well as, uh, as some stickers um, featuring that artwork. Um, and of course, there are a couple more records and CDs around the store that you can browse through. Um, any other business items to bring up? No? Okay. Um, and we're going to play uh, the last tune on the album. This is called Double Memory. Once again, Katie Weissman, Megan Kyle, Evan Courtney, Michael McFeely.